In this training guide, you're going to be learning the entire process we use to refurbish an iPhone X or XS. We're using an iPhone X in this video, however, the process is exactly the same for an iPhone XS. We've made this training guide as an aid for repairers who've ideally had some in-person training and want to use these guides as a reference or a reminder of their training. Refurbishment isn't difficult once you know what you're doing. However, there's only so much we can show in a video guide. A lot of the learning process is done through trial and error from practicing, which is why we suggest in-person training to get you up and running before attempting refurbishment. If you are looking to get into iPhone refurbishment and don't know where to start, we offer a variety of professional refurbishment courses to get your business up and running, all of which are linked in the description below. If you are following along, you're going to need all the right tools. The tools we're using in this guide are a heated vacuum plate, we're using the Ford FW360 machine, a silicon mat shape for the iPhone X and XS, an eye test box with a relevant tester flex cable, ordinary pliers or side cutters, heat proof gloves, a Dorco blade, forward diamond wire at a thickness of 0.04 mil, a feeler gauge, IPA in a flux dispenser bottle, an OCA glue removal tool, clean room wipes, a magic mat, a dust detection lamp, a Sam King lamination mold for iPhone X or XS, an iPhone X or XS touchscreen digitizer and top glass lens with OCA, a Nassan laminator, a Nassan debubbler, a soldering iron, solder flux, tweezers, a lamination mold for iPhone X and XS, a replacement touchscreen frame, cold press glue, and finally, a glue gun. The guide will be separated into two main sections, cutting and laminating. In the first section, we'll be covering removing the outer frame and the safest way to do so without damaging the OLED. We'll show you how to cut through the touch and glass layer with the correct technique, We'll talk about the best way to remove the OCA and finally, we'll cover removing the touch flex. Once these two main sections have been completed, we'll show you how to finish up your newly refurbished screen by soldering the display flex and then applying a new touchscreen frame. Before we even start the cutting process, you'll want to assess the damage of your screen. If your screen is badly cracked, you'll want to tape it up with sellotape to make sure it's more stable. The next thing you're going to want to do is test the screen. Check if there are any issues and generally assess the damage. You're going to be looking for burns, colourful marks, bleeds or lines. It's worth noting that screens with these issues are still refurbishable, however you won't be able to remove any of these issues during the refurbishment process. We tend to avoid refurbishing any screens with these issues and stick to refurbishing screens that we can label as grade A. So, once you know that your screen is ready to refurbish, you can begin removing the outer frame. To start this process, you'll need to place it on a heated vacuum plate, which will hold the screen in place as you refurbish it. Set the machine to 100 degrees and apply some IPA to the camera bracket and toward the bottom flex so it softens the adhesive in this area. Leave the screen for around 5 minutes to make sure the adhesive has begun heating thoroughly. Once 5 minutes has passed, remove the camera bracket with some side cutters or ordinary pliers. Use the pliers again to cut through the top of the frame from both sides. Now get a thin metal sheet where you're using a feeler gauge and push underneath the frame until you feel the adhesive has been cut and it starts to come away from the screen. Use IPA to help loosen the frame away from the adhesive, then do the same with the other side. It's really important to be mindful of where the glass cracks are when prying the frame. If there are cracks on the edges of the screen, then you'll need to be overly cautious when lifting the frame away in those areas. If you lift the frame straight up where a crack sits, this could cause the glass to be pushed up into the OLED display, damaging it. Whenever you can, make sure you push outwards rather than upwards. You'll generally get a better feel for this the more times you refurbish a screen. You'll feel when the frame is giving you too much resistance that might potentially cause damage. Just try and be overly cautious wherever possible when you're first starting out. Once you reach the bottom of the frame, make sure you only stick the feeler gauge in a couple of millimetres and push inwards rather than across to avoid damaging the flex underneath the frame. Pry on the right hand side first as an IC sits on the left hand side making it difficult to pry underneath the frame due to how close the IC sits to the frame. To get around this, lift the frame slightly to allow yourself a bit of room to pry underneath it. Once you've pried underneath the entire frame, you can lift the frame away from the screen. Make sure you lift it from the left hand side where the IC sits to avoid damaging the flex underneath. This moves us on to our next section, cutting the touch layer. An iPhone X is made up of four major layers. Starting at the top of the screen is the glass layer, then comes the touch, after that is the polarizer, and finally the OLED layer. 
and amongst these layers are layers of OCA which bond them together. The goal here is to cut below the glass and touch layer to separate the polarizer and OLED layer. It is possible to just cut through the glass layer to save the touch layer if the touch is working. We don't have a guide on this yet, but if we do in the future, we'll put a link in the description below. To cut the screen, you'll need diamond wire. We're using forward diamond wire at a thickness of 0.04 mil. To get a good grip of the wire, hold the diamond wire reel in one hand and then start pulling wire from the reel and wrap the wire around your other hand a few times. Once it's tight and secure around your hand, hold the wire tight against both of your thumbs. To start cutting, you'll want to cut from the top of the iPhone and cut each side individually. You shouldn't try and cut from both sides at once as there is a higher chance you'll cut through the polarizer and damage the OLED. If you cut from either side first, you'll get a clearer view of where to cut before cutting the rest of the screen. You'll want to start by cutting through the glass layer first as it's easier to identify than the touch layer. The touch layer sits further into the screen. Once you've cut a couple of centimeters through the glass layer, you'll need to bring your wire back out completely and you can move up a notch and cut through the touch layer. Cut through the glass layer on both sides first and get the wire to meet in the middle. Now you've cut through the glass at the top of the screen, the OLED layer will lift slightly due to the heat and you'll get a clearer picture of where you need to cut the touch layer. With your wire, aim between the OLED and the touch layer and cut through on one side of the screen. You'll be able to tell whether you've cut the right layer as you'll notice the touch layer is gold so you'll have that as a visual cue. Do the same on the other side of the screen and once you're four to five centimeters through, join the wire on the other side of the screen. Now you can cut through the rest of the screen. Cut at a 45 degree angle, switching continuously between cutting from the right and then the left. Once you reach the bottom of the display, there'll be three flex cables that you can cut through. If you're saving the touch layer, then you will not be cutting through the flexors. If saving the touch layer, do another pass through with the wire to make sure it's definitely free from the glass. You can now gently remove the OLED layer. That's everything for the cutting process, which moves us on to removing the OCA. Before moving on, give the screen a quick test to see if it's been damaged during the cutting process. Once you're happy, with a vacuum machine still at 100 degrees Celsius, place the screen on a silicon mat shaped for the iPhone X and XS. Cover the screen with a couple of clean room wipes and wet them with IPA. Wait for the IPA to dry up and then remove the cleaning cloths. The IPA is helping to soften the OCA and makes it easier to remove in the next step. To remove the OCA, you'll need to use a glue removal tool and run it back and forth across the screen until all of the OCA has been removed. To use this tool correctly, make sure you hold the rod as flat against the screen as possible. Holding it at a higher angle could risk damaging the screen. You'll also need to switch between the two direction modes from clockwise to anti-clockwise, depending on how the OCA is resting on the screen. Once you've removed as much as you can with a removal tool, clean the excess with IPA and a cleaning cloth. Next, you'll need to remove the remnants of the touch layer by removing the touch layer flex. Apply some IPA and pry the touch IC flex upwards and with pliers, cut through the inner flex as later you'll need to solder this flex to the new digitizer. Apply more IPA and pry underneath the touch IC and remove the touch flex. Okay, so now you've finished the cutting, let's move on to the laminating. You'll be finishing the refurbishment process by applying a fresh digitizer to your cut screen. The process is pretty much the same for all iPhone models, so you won't need to worry about learning the lamination process for each model. In this section, we'll be covering cleaning your freshly cut screen and making sure it's as dust-free as possible, applying your new digitizer, laminating with a NASA lamination machine, and finally, debubbling the screen. Starting, of course, with the cleaning process. For this step, we're using a clean room. Clean rooms are designed to mitigate dust, which is what you're going to want to do when creating a refurbished screen. 
However, most people won't have space for one of these, so as an alternative, you can use a clean room box or laminar hood. Start by cleaning the screen with clean room wipes underneath the dust detection lamp, and make sure there's no visible dust. These lamps are designed to help you easily see any dust particles, scratches, or contaminants on the screen. With the cleaning done, it's time to apply the new digitizer. Put the screen in an alignment mold and make sure it sits flat and give it one more quick clean. Get yourself a new digitizer and remove the digitizer's OCA plastic backing sheet. Press down into the mold and it will pinch the middle of the touchscreen and OLED layer together and begin the bonding process. With the digitizer applied, it's time to laminate. To fully bond the digitizer to the OLED, you have to use a lamination machine. This applies even pressure across the screen and bonds the digitizer to the OLED. The final step in the whole lamination process is to put the screen into a debubbler. This is a pressure pod which applies pressure and helps remove any bubbles in the screen. Before moving on to the next step, you should give your screen a test after the lamination process to make sure everything is working correctly. Now it's time to connect the old display flex to the new touchscreen digitizer flex. Using solder flux, apply a small layer to the end of the flex. Then with some solder wire and a soldering iron, melt some 183 degree solder wire onto the flex. We recommend using a fume extractor for this to avoid breathing in the fumes. Rub the soldering iron across the pads until the solder covers all of the pads. Using tweezers, remove what's left of the old touchscreen digitizer flex. And using the solder wire and iron, apply some more solder to the flex again, making sure all of the pads are covered. Peel the adhesive protector away from the new flex and fold it down onto the back of the screen. Prop up the screen and make sure the two flex cables are stuck together properly. Use the two windows on either side of the pads to make sure that both dots are lined up on either window. If this is done, then each pad is lined up correctly. Now add some more flux onto the flex. Stick the tweezers into the flex hold to keep it in place, and then using a clean soldering iron, rub against the flex and the solder applied to the old display flex. Stick the tweezers into the flex hold to keep it in place and then using a clean soldering iron, rub against the flex and the solder applied to the old display flex will come through to the digitizer flex and bond the two together. Clean it up using some IPA and a cleaning cloth and then remove another adhesive protector and press the display flex inwards against the exposed adhesive. Now it's time to apply a new frame. Grab a frame press mold and a new frame and remove the frame's adhesives and press the new frame into the mold. Using some cold pressed glue and a glue gun, glue around the entire edge of the frame, doing only one pass around the frame with the glue. Next, you're going to bond the screen to the frame. Make sure you do this within five minutes of applying the glue to avoid the glue setting before applying the screen. Before putting the screen into the mold, make sure the flex cables are tucked in neatly. You'll need to lower the bottom edge of the screen in first as this lowers the chance of damaging the display flex. Then press the top edge down and lightly press against the whole of the screen. Move the screen around a bit to make sure the whole of the screen is bonded with the glue and frame. Place the top of the mold on and leave it for 24 hours to set. Once 24 hours have passed, remove the top of the mold and take the screen out. Lastly, you're going to want to run your tweezers around the outside edge of the screen, removing any residue or excess glue on the outer edge of the screen. When you've finished, give the frame a quick clean with IPA, 
to help remove any excess glue. And lastly, give your screen a quick test to make sure everything is working correctly. And that's it. That's the entire refurbishment process for an iPhone X or XS. I hope you found this guide helpful. And as always, if you have any questions or if you'd like to see more refurbishment videos like this from us, then let us know in the comments below.